Uh, hello and welcome to today's talk. I'm Dr. Tom Oakley, uh, radiologist by clinical background and now full-time clinical entrepreneur fellow with NHS England and chief executive officer of Feedback Medical. And with me today, I have Georges. Georges, do you want to introduce yourself? Yep. Hi, I'm Georgie Man Kwong. I'm a consultant chest physician uh, based at the Royal Oldham Hospital in Greater Manchester, part of the Northern Care Alliance. And I'm the Chief Clinical, Info Clinical Information Officer, there's a mouthful, CCIO for the Panine aspect of that organisation. Thanks, Georges. So, um, Georges is here to really talk with me about our deployment of LEPA as a communication tool into the front line of the NHS and just to go through some of the lessons that we've learned as we've, as we've done this. Just ever so quickly, I wanted to touch on what Bleeper is as a tool. So Bleeper really is a communication platform for all frontline clinicians, and it brings together diagnostic quality medical imaging with secure instant messaging, video calling capabilities. And we've worked together actually with Pennine, as we'll, we'll come to you later, to really iron out how you can handle inpatient referrals through a communication platform. So it's not just about bringing the team together, it's also about supporting the patient workflow through the hospitals. But it's, it's more than just a communication platform. It's also the only communication platform on the NHS communication framework that actually holds a CE mark for medical imaging. Now, medical imaging is actually really important. It underlies pretty much all the decision-making processes that we make as clinicians on the front line. And if you're using it to inform the decisions you're making, you've got to have it at the best quality. And that's really what we're about with Bleeper. Historically, we've been a PAX company. We've been developing and delivering PAX services into the NHS since 2001. And we've leveraged that heritage of imaging software into this messaging platform to make sure that clinicians really do have access to top quality medical imaging. And we have certified the product as a medical device um, we've certified it to be suitable for clinical review purposes. And that, that is really important because it protects you as a clinician and your employing trust. So the medical device directive is, is really clear about this. If you're using any sort of digital patient imaging for any clinical decision or diagnostic purpose, then you must be using an appropriately CE marked medical device. If you're not using a product that's a medical device, then essentially you're, you're doing what you is constitutes off license use of a medical device. And that means that you as the individual clinician and your employing trust are open to civil claims liability from any decision that arises from the use of that product. And this is why Bleeper is so important because it makes sure that you comply with those regulations. The last thing before we have a much more interesting discussion with, with George's around what we've, we've learned is just to highlight that Bleeper is now available through the NHSX clinical communication framework, which I'm sure you'll hear more about as the head conference continues. And the important thing to highlight on that is that we are the only tool within this framework that holds a CE mark for medical imaging and is certified to deliver it at that appropriate quality. The framework has a centralized pot of three million pounds. That means that NHSX very kindly will pay for these solutions for up to two years with a possible extension to a third year. So really there is no reason why not to engage with us. We can help you to move away from pages and fax machines. We can help you to streamline inpatient referral processes. And most importantly, we can help you to do things like MDTs or clinical case discussion in a regulatory compliant way. Anyway, that's quite enough from me. Over to the main man. So we're going to talk about Bleeper at Pennine. So, Georges, I think it's probably worth us um, outlining where, where this all started. Um, and it's not all been plain sailing. We, we had a couple of bumpy spots when we, we started off. Um, so do you want to talk us through essentially what we've, what we've done together at Pennine? Yeah, and so we met... Um... Just over a year ago, I think, Tom, and yeah. at that time, we were grappling with some challenges around how to better manage and process and triage um, specialty referrals in our busy um, organization. And often as chance meetings happen, we, we met and identified Bleeper as a potential solution. 
I think it's fair to say it was in a more perhaps embryonic um, uh, sort of version, but absolutely the the excitement of having PAX imaging accessible um, in a secure way was really important. If you think about what we were doing around that time, the special ash referral pathway is complex with lots of points in and out, both formal and informal. And whilst the formal bits were being covered, we also had doctors messaging each other on tech by text and by WhatsApp, and, and clearly that's not secure or acceptable. Um, so we worked together uh, to really, uh, in a proof of concept way, um, to look at how we could manage um, respiratory referrals. Um, and then we did manage to get uh, a pilot version off the ground, but I would say it didn't work. It failed because it was very unidirectional. The benefit of Leaper uh, and messaging is that you want everybody to have it. So we kind of crashed a bit, if you remember, Tom, uh, and everything went a bit yeah. silent. And then what happened? <laughs> well, then COVID moved. came yeah. along. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I, um, I think just before we touch on COVID and what we what we did then, I, I think the the really important thing for the the, the sort of entrepreneurs and the the um, tech pioneers out there who may be watching this it, it's a really um, unique thing about digital technology that you can actually build these tools in partnership with your frontline users and whenever you develop a tool in isolation it, it never does what your users need it to so one of the great privileges that we've had with bleeper has been to be able to work with pennine from what was a very embryonic stage and to develop the product dynamically in response to that feedback with them. And um, as, as I'm sure Georges will, will say again, it, this sort of co-development is absolutely um, fundamental to developing a tool that really delivers what clinicians need, need it to. Um, but yes, anyway, so then COVID hit and uh, back to you, Georges. So then COVID hit, I guess what I'd also say is although the first pilot did not work. What we did achieve, I think technically, um, working with um, our IT team at Pennine and, and feedback, I think we did have a, we did create a product that was technically acceptable in terms of um, linking it up to our PaaS system and to our PAC system. So in many respects, that was a technical success. Uh, clinically, it was challenging because it was very unidirectional. Um, we were taking intranet based referrals and putting them onto the bleeper system. And so that was limiting. But I think when COVID came, we had another opportunity to get together and to think. And if you think about it, Tom, it was a crazy thing to do in the beginning of COVID. But in a way, there was a kind of energy and a, a willingness for us to work together to do this. Um, we were really lucky. We had some great clinicians on the ground, our registrars and clinical fellows who really wanted to support this project as well. I think because they saw the potential of, of the Bleeper application. Um, and we worked very hard to try and get it off the ground again, but the difference being that Bleeper could then be offered to a much larger group of clinicians who could then refer in to us on it. And that was the difference. Yeah. And so we were able to do that. And we identified COVID uh, and the need to identify patients for the recovery trial as a, as a as an opportunity, as well as developing it as a way to refer to respiratory medicine, because we get a lot of referrals um, and we were stretched uh, and conditions were different. Um, and so we worked together. Um, Tom, in terms of what we did, should we talk about the various meetings we had and how we did that? Um, I yeah. think you might call it agile management. <laughs> it was it was certainly pretty dynamic. So we we actually ended up having with weekly um, weekly steering group sessions, didn't we? With multiple touch points throughout the week, we did rapid requirements gathering, and then we turned that into a um, a sort of sprint development cycle to ensure that we really capitalised on on what we what we could do. Um, I, I think it's, it's probably fair to say actually one of the one of the best things we did was actually facilitate an integration into PaaS um, so that the patient administration system because it also allowed us then to be able to track patients by ward location and the, the wealth of data that came from that meant that we could really enhance the offering to clinicians and, and I think it, you'll probably agree Jordan hopefully that 
it made it much more useful clinically um, as a tool. It did. And um, I think that then, that then allowed us to, to really launch it as a, a useful tool. Um, so just to give people a bit of context, um, it allowed us to collect some core data um, on, on patients that are being referred to us, uh, their COVID status, their clinical frailty score, um, their up-to-date observations. And for referrals, it asked the question, you know, what is it that you want us, what's the question you, that you'd like us to address? We found that we had a large number of referrals pre bleeper that we could manage without having to see the patient because we could look at radiology and, and make recommendations that way. And then the messaging functionality was really, really useful um, because it allows us then to, to message the referring teams um, and, and manage the patients appropriately. It certainly saved time. I think because of the co-design and collaboration between the Bleeper team, our own technical team and our clinicians, then that we had a product that was easy to use, fairly intuitive, I would say, um, and, and, and accepted. Um, and so now people are saying, you know, I'll, I'll refer on Bleeper and we've got people where we haven't rolled it out to yet are saying I want to refer on Bleeper. So it's, it's going places. Um, yes. I, I think one of the things that I was quite fascinated by when we were doing this deployment was, uh, but largely because it was clinician led, we actually found that Bleeper was being used in ways we hadn't even anticipated. I mean, there was, um, there was a gastro reg, for example, that was using Bleeper uh, so, so this particular individual, actually, because of her own underlying um, health concerns, had to um, self-isolate. Uh, and, and because of Bleeper, they were actually able to manage the referral process for the gastro team um, entirely remotely. Um, because they were shielding, they couldn't see patients. But rather than being lost to the system for that entire period, un totally unbeknown to us, they were able to facilitate the entire referral stream for gastro. Um, and I think, George, that's one of the great things we found with working with, with you guys at Pennine, the, the clinical buy-in and engagement, and also for the willingness to try different deployments, it, it was an incredibly um, stimulating environment. I think so. I think that, that relationship, because we worked together and we were problem solving together at the very beginning, pre-COVID, and I think because of the urgency and what we're trying to achieve and the whole of the way the NHS was feeling, it felt like a real period of, of exploration um, with a willingness to make a difference. I mean, just going back to what you're saying, Tom, we also had one of our um, associate specialists who continues to use Bleeper um, to check referrals from India at the moment. Um, he's out there on... on um, extended leave, but he's still supporting us. So it truly has become international. Uh, secure, we should, of course. We should caveat there, George, is that that's through the um, the hospital VPN. So it's also it's secure. through the VPN system, of course. <laughs> yeah. But it it was that, and also the gastroenterology team. They are a very high um, demand. There's a high demand for referrals, and so they were walking around the hospitals as picking up referrals. Um, and a lot of them, again, could be managed virtually. So they really liked it. And I think word of mouth then has spread. And so we've got other specialities on board. So at the moment, we're about to go live with cardiology. We're looking at microbiology because they have a lot of calls that they think they can manage virtually now. And we're looking at ways that, that they can start pushing out to teams um, and surgery as well. So I think through, I guess, uh, through little acorns grow, oak trees grow, is that right? So I think we're beginning to start seeding around now um, yeah. and, and spreading the word. And it doesn't stop there, does it, Tom? No, no, it doesn't. I mean, one of the, uh, one of the things that we're looking at now is how we can use Bleeper within the MDT setting. Uh, we, we've already alluded to the fact that um, Bleeper allows you to see imaging in that diagnostic review quality and is certified as a medical device to do that. But one of the unique features about Bleeper is that we allow individual users on a, on a multi-video call to each receive a render of that DICOM image directly from PAX. So you're seeing an image in the, that sort of clinical quality rather than through a screen share, which means every single clinical user is able to see it in that diagnostic quality. And that's really the advantage of a C-marked 
uh, image viewer like like bleeper so that that i think is going to be our next step is how can we take this one step further and go from inpatient referrals into mdt facilitation which which would be really exciting that's right and in fact the, the quality of the image um is incredible particularly on mobile devices so again as a as a chest physician for instance we look at a lot of pulmonary nodules which are very big but the rapidity of the images um, appearing on the bleeper application and then actually the ability to zoom in and look at a, a nodule for instance or some fine lung architecture um, is quite incredible i think again that that got that got sold when we first saw the demo way back then so i think it's been really good that we've, we've, we've worked together to try and make a difference. And in fact, you and I, Tom, were talking about this relationship that the NHS has with industry and how it's really important that actually we're both approaching it with this need and feeling and, and, and ambition to make a difference. Yes, I, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I think it's probably um, just quickly worth us touching on some of the uh, challenges that we've we've faced doing this as well, um, uh, particularly bring your own device policies and some of the, the sort of more infrastructure barriers to adopting this, because I, I know other trusts will have these concerns. That's right. So, for instance, um, using uh, Chrome uh, was an issue that we've overcome. Um, I think doctors, particularly doctors in training, are very ingenious. Uh, they think about everything and workarounds. And in a way, what the BYOD issue has, has, has meant for us is we, we have had to look at our policy. Um, and in a way, I think Bleeper part is partly driving this, uh, this need to enable people to use applications on their own devices now. So... I think that's coming and that's very positive. So in a way, there are many other changes uh, which we didn't see at first. Um, and, and some of those arose from challenging, you know, challenges really. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and, and I think this is another message for other um, health tech companies and, and, and trusts who are looking at engaging with these sorts of tools. I, I think it's it's not going to be entirely smooth. There are going to be barriers, but you you will collectively overcome them, providing you you can work together. But I, I think one of the things is that we we've taken so much learning now from our deployment at Pennine that actually it has already helped us in deployments in, in other settings. And I think once you've learnt those lessons once, it makes it so much easier to to then do them again. Um, but clearly, the, the more uh, the, the more systems you can integrate with, the, the closer you can sit with those clinical users, and, and the more you can bespoke things dynamically to your customer, the, the, the better the fit. I, I think that would be fair to say, isn't it, George? I think so. I think it's been really nice to develop something that has a great uh, generic base. I guess you know the the DNA of of um, of the application is there. But then for each speciality, we have to we have had to make some changes to so that bespokeness of it. Um, and that's what's brought the buy in from our clinicians as well. I think we've been generous to them in doing that. But we've also said, you know, this is the core stuff and this, this is the stuff that you have to do. That we can't change. Uh, and that's been the success. And I think it's not over yet because I think going forwards, there's we're going to continue to work together to improve the, the user design, the, the look, you know, there's going to be a lot of changes. I think what's exciting is that the product we have now is, is not going to be the product we're going to have in six months or a year's time. It's going to look different, but it will be better for it. Yeah. So you, in summary, you'd recommend Bleeper, Georges? <laughs> <laughs> I think bleeper should replace the bleep. I think that's uh, that's <laughs> one thing. Um, no, I, I, in all seriousness, I think what's been really valuable for me as a as a clinician, um, as a CCIO, and as a digital leader, therefore, is actually the work relationship that we've had uh, in the NHS with with um, bleeper. At, you know, in the industry, um, Tom and I were having another discussion where we were comparing you know, our feelings with the pharmaceutical industry uh, as, as doctors, um, particularly from a commercial point of view, I think this is different. I think our approach to 
um, working together in collaboration to co-create stuff now uh, is different uh, and much more positive. And it's changed my thinking uh, and my attitude towards industry. So I'm grateful for that. Um, I have no, I have no interest, financial interest otherwise in Beeper, but I really want them to do well because we will work together to to have a to have and create a, a great well i think it's a great product i do think it is something that other organizations will use um obviously as tom says think carefully of how you use it um and i think there's more potential that we'd like to to squeeze out of it as well going forwards brilliant uh, we, we better finish off there georgia because i think we're, we're almost out of time but thank you so much for, for taking the time with us um, I, just for, for those who are looking at the presentation, um, please do visit us at our virtual booth on the event platform. We'd be very happy to see all of you there, answer any questions and give you more information about Bleeper. Um, and if you want to contact us specifically about CE marking, medical devices within communication, then please do reach out. We'd be delighted to, to speak to any and all of you. Thanks so much.